You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Living Jewishly Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Living Jewishly Podcast. And we are in the halachas of Tzitzit, where this is the part two and the final segment of the laws of Tzitzis. So we mentioned previously last week that there's an obligation for every male to wear a tzitzis, the strings, on every four-cornered garment. We're going to see a little bit more of those details this week. Our sages infer from the Torah saying, you shall see it, you shall see the tzitzis, uri'itemoto, that the blessing for tzitzis be made only by day. The blessing on tzitzis should be recited only once the light of day is sufficient to distinguish between blue and white. One who wears tzitzis and a talis should have in mind for the tzitzis when reciting the blessing on the talis. This also applies if one was unable to recite the blessing when putting on the tzitzis in the morning. So either it was too early when he put on his tzitzis or he didn't wash his hands yet, which the halacha says you should put on your tzitzis immediately upon waking up, even before washing your hands. And it's not a problem that you're not reciting a blessing because you're soon going to recite a blessing in synagogue for your talit, and that will include your talit katan, which is your tzitzis. One who does not wear a talis should recite the blessing of al mitzvah tzitzis, seen here on the bottom of the page, when wearing the tzitzis, when donning them. If it was worn before daybreak or before the hands were washed, after daylight arrives and the hands are washed, one should hold the tzitzis in his hand and recite the blessing of al mitzvah tzitzis. Because generally, we recite the blessing first and then perform the mitzvah. So we recite the blessing, we hold up our, our tzitzis, and we say the blessing of al mitzvah tzitzis and then put them on. But now we're wearing them already. So what do you do? It's like, we mentioned previously, you hold the tzitzis strings in your hands and you recite the blessing and then give them a kiss and then you have fulfilled your mitzvah appropriately. If one takes off the talus with intention to rewear it immediately, like he goes to the bathroom, goes to the lavatory for a little break, he does not need to re-recite the blessing. However, if one takes off the talus with no intention to rewear it and then he's like, oh, I didn't realize, I need to put it back on then he must recite another blessing. It is permissible to enter the lavatory whilst wearing a talus or tzitzis, contrary to popular belief. You're allowed to wear it in the restroom. You don't have to take off your tzitzis every time you go to the bathroom. Now, if someone feels their own personal need, it's inappropriate, I don't want to wear my talus or my tzitzis when I'm going to the restroom, that's their own prerogative. But the halacha does not require one to take it off. Because it's it's like you don't take off your shirt. Right? It's part of your garment. This is part of your, your clothes. A talus that falls off a person. So what's if a person's, this happens at times, or someone's going to the to get their aliyah, they're going to the amud, and their talus slips off. What do you do then? If it completely falls off, recite a new blessing. If it partially falls off, no new blessing is needed. If it falls off mid-prayer, when no interruption is allowed, it is best to wear the talus and repeat the blessing only later when it is permitted to repeat the blessing. Now, I'm going to introduce you to something you never saw before, okay? Okay, we'll see in a second. If one was wearing a tzitzis when the talus fell... There is a dispute whether a new blessing is required to begin with because I'm, I am wearing tzitzis. So now the talus fell. Ask your bona fide local rabbi to ensure that what you're doing is proper. Next, number 10. The Talmud teaches us that one who borrows without the owner's knowledge is considered a thief. If you borrow, I go over to your house and I'm like, your lawnmower is right there. I say, I'm just going to borrow it for a few minutes. I just, I'm not even asking. And I just take it to my house and mow my lawn and bring back the lawnmower. Even if it's in perfect condition, I'm considered a thief. However, there is an exception to that. If the borrower performs a mitzvah with the object and the owner will not in- incur any loss, it is okay. Any loss. Now, 
if I use your car, I put mileage on it, it, that's a loss. I can't just assume that because you're a nice person that you allow. If it's for a mitzvah and there's no loss incurred, very important. There is disagreement if the owner specifically disapproves the borrowing, whether it may be done regardless or not. So if I say, I do not allow you to touch my talit, I do not allow you, can I still use it anyway? Okay. Nowadays, it is assumed that everyone minds and specific permission should be received. Borrowing without the owner's knowledge on an irregular basis is okay, as one is pleased that a mitzvah is performed with his possessions. I'd love that my sitter that's sitting in the synagogue, I'm not using it now. I don't mind if you use it. So you're doing a mitzvah with my possession. That's, that's an honor. There are a few details, though. It cannot be removed from the house in which it was placed because the owner may object to that. So you can't take it now from the house, bring it to your house, and use it there. And it's got to stay in the place that it was. Number two, it should be returned as found, folded and all. It was folded a certain way, you fold it back that way. Don't be Mr. Righteous and say, well, if they want a mitzvah done with there, let them fold it. I did the mitzvah, now they should thank me, right? No, that's obnoxious. But folding a garment with meticulous care is, in certain situations, prohibited on Shabbos, for it may constitute improving the garment. So let me explain. You'll notice that many men do not fold their talit on Shabbat. And that is because the talus has a crease. And when you fold it on the crease, you're reaffirming that crease. You can't do that on Shabbos. You're refining the garment. Here, you were wearing it, let's say, for two, three hours in the synagogue. The crease gets a little bit uncreased. And now you're refolding it on the crease. You're enhancing that crease again. Allah says it's problematic. And therefore, many people do not fold their talit on Shabbat. In fact, the halacha says that immediately after Shabbos, one of the chores that every man should do is fold his talus. And in fact, the halacha says that it's a sign of shalom bayit, of having peace in the home, that you don't have your messy talus hanging around your house. You should clean it up. If one borrows a talus from a friend for an aliyah at the Torah, it is halachically questionable if a blessing is recited. If one borrows a talus from the congregation for an aliyah at the Torah, a blessing is recited because it's considered as if it's your talus. If a single, even two or three strings of the talus tore after the knotted area, so from the extension part of the, of the tzitzis, meaning the string part, not the knotted part, it does not render the tzitzis unkosher and may still be worn. It's ideal for it to be fixed, but it's not unkosher. If it is above the knots, closer to the garment, it is not kosher and cannot be worn until it is fixed. That's one of the areas by the knot, by where, this, where the string before the knot attaches to the garment, that needs to be checked regularly because if one of those are cut, even by mistake, it is unkosher and unworthy of being worn as tzitzis or talus. The tzitzis strings, a minimum of two threads, must be twisted together to be kosher for tzitzis or talus use. It says, p'tilim ta selecha, they should be twined together in order for them to be tzitzis. Many consider it proper observance of the mitzvah to have what's known as kafel shmona, the strings twisted with eight threads. So what they do is they take eight threads of wool and they spin them together to make the tzitzis. So my tzitzis are made actually of eight threads, each one of them. Why? Because we have to have eight strings on each corner. So having eight strings spun together to make eight strings, to make each one of the eight strings, is the ideal observance of the mitzvah. Today you can buy them. They're not expensive. Having, you know, regular eight strings spun together Kafel Shmona is already standard industry practice. Number 19. If and or when any string becomes unraveled, 
from its twistedness. The unraveled part is considered as cut off and as if it does not exist. The unraveled part, because sometimes the twisted part gets unraveled, that's considered like it's not even there. You can you can cut it off, it's not there. So a person has to be careful if it gets unraveled all the way up to the top. Essentially, you don't have any strings there. Number 20, what should be done if a large talus with a seam down the middle, sometimes you have a really large talus, and it's a co- really a connection of two separate garments that were stitched together, and then the strings were put on. And remember last week we spoke about the mitzvah of ta'aselecha, p'tilim ta'aselecha. The mitzvah tells us, the Torah tells us, that you should make strings on a garment. You don't make the garment of the strings. So, for example, if you have a garment that has strings on the corner, properly done, and you have another garment that has a, a string on the corner, and another garment that has a string on the corner, and another garment, and you attach them all now and make them into one garment, that's not kosher. Why? Because the strings were there before the garment was made. You understand? So it's very important to remember this when we read halacha number 20 here. What should be done if a large talus with a seam down the middle whose tzitzis are validly attached, they become separated at the seam, either for the purpose of handling, for laundering, or mending it, or if the corner is completely cut off and it is essentially now two separate garments. Sewing the two halves together again would result in validating the talus for the mitzvah through an act not done directly to the tzitzis. Thus, tase velomena asui. You're making a talus of what was already made. Means you have to put the tzitzis on the garment, not the garment on the tzitzis. And therefore, it would render it unkosher. So one solution could be to remove one of the corner strings and restring it on the reassembled garment. So what you do is you don't have to take off all four corners because it was a garment prior of tzitzis. You take off one of the strings from the corners, and then after the garment is reassembled, you put back that corner, you restring it, and it becomes, again, a kosher garment. Again, ask your bona fide local rabbi to ensure that what you're doing is proper. If the garment was not completely severed, it is okay to restitch together and make it a single garment again. So if it gets torn, but it's not completely severed. As long as there's stitching there, you can restitch it to complete the garment to its fullness. If one is removing the strings, number 22, if one is removing the strings to replace with nicer ones, it is okay. You can take them off. But it is more respectful to untie them rather than cut them. However, it is permitted to cut them where untying them would be too tedious. It's a lot of work to untie the knots and then to unstring them and then to untie. and to, it's, it's a lot of work. So if it's too tedious then and too much, too cumbersome, you can just cut them. The invalid or removed strings or the old Tala's garment should not be thrown in the garbage, but rather buried with shamos, with dignity for the mitzvah it served. Just because right now it's an invalid garment for tzitzis, just because, and this is, by the way, applicable to anything. If you have a page from your prayer book that gets torn out, you don't throw it in the garbage. You have to treat it with complete and total holiness, and it should be buried. And in fact, in the Jewish communities, we have this in Houston as well, there is, right prior to Pesach, they have Seamus gathering, And Seamus means the names of God. You don't want to just desecrate the names of God. You don't just erase them. You don't throw them out. You don't discard of them. They have to be done with proper dignity. What they do is they dig a big hole in the ground, like a burial, and they bury it in the ground properly, like we do for a deceased person. And sometimes, by the way, they'll even bury it with a deceased person. They'll put it in the the casket. With a deceased person, they'll put like a little bag of Shemus. It is forbidden to wear a garment of four corners that does not have tzitzis on them. And this is referring to day garments. Doing so is a biblical transgression. What is a day garment? Clothes you wear by day. You ever wonder about a blanket that has four corners? Why don't we have tzitzis on our blanket? Because it's not a day garment. 
even someone who had, does night shift always and is sleeping by day, it's still blankets are considered night garments and therefore they do not require tzitzis. If you realize mid-prayer that your tzitzis are on kosher, for the sake of your dignity, you are permitted to wear the talus till the end of the prayers. However, if you knew before Shabbos that it was invalid, you are forbidden to wear that talus on Shabbos since you should have fixed it before Shabbos came in. You're not allowed to tie knots on Shabbos, so you can't fix them and make them on Shabbos. And now this is very important here. The garments like scarves or even hats, there are some hats that have four corners, blankets, all of these that have four corners are not required to have tzitzis on them. It's only garments that you wear on your body, not a scarf that you wrap around your neck that's not considered a full garment that you wear. Even if you sometimes wear it over, it's not considered, you know, like a little shawl is not considered a garment that is required of tzitzis. And on the bottom of the page, we have the blessing that we recite on the tzitzis, not on the talus. Last week, we had the blessing for the talus. This week, we have the blessing for the tzitzis, and that is, Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddishanu B'Mitzvosa V'Tzivanu Al Mitzvas Tzitzis. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us concerning the mitzvah of tzitzis. My dear friends, this concludes this episode, and I would like to thank you for joining us. Please like, share, review, give us your feedback, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a marvelous Shabbos. Thank you, my dear friends.